שירוק מכסה, והמרחב נפתח בעיניה, עיניה נפתח לשניה. Welcome you to the 8th Annual Women's Encounter here in Magdala. We I'm actually delighted to see all of you and I want to come together with all of you and place these flowers on our heads for all of the ladies that are here present. Now you might ask yourselves why we would do something like this. As a consecrated woman, I don't often get to wear flowers, but I have to say you all look fantastic. And we have a gentleman over here, if you'd like to see, who also is honoring women. And our, our wonderful sisters also have it. Look at, brilliant. So I want to thank you for putting these flowers on. Why are we doing this? There's a couple of reasons and I wanted to make sure that you know why. For those of you who don't have the grace to live here in this part of Galilee, you have come at one of the most beautiful times of year. Outside you see the white mustard covering the hillsides, you can see Mount Arbel just bursting with the bright yellow blooms of the bushes. And I'm sure you've noticed the almond trees blossoming as well as some of the apple and cherry. Well, I don't know if there are cherry blossoms. You all would tell me better. I went to, to uh, harvest cherries uh, last year, so it was a delight. But when you come to Galilee in the springtime, this is generally what happens. And perhaps this happened to you in your cars. <sighs> there was a deep breath and you were filled with wonder and awe because there was something beautiful that happens in Galilee and it's filled with life. Now I have to tell you, we did not take before and after pictures of you, but ladies and gentlemen, your face before you put on your flowers and after you did so also gave you a radiance and a joy that is unique. And so you're thinking, Yes, this is one of the reasons. This is one of the symbols, one of the universal symbols of beauty and of femininity. And having the Women's Conference in Galilee in the springtime focuses on the wonder and the beauty of women, which points to one of the basic dimensions of her dignity. And that's why I think bringing this all together is wonderful. Besides that, you've noticed in your program, we do have a young woman here she is here with her whole family this weekend, Ella Medina, whom we will hear from later. Her group called Alma, which means soul, very appropriately speaking, a women's Israel voice. They wear flowers as part of their um, identity. And they will be one of our last events during this really 24 hours that we are here together celebrating women. And so to honor them and to bring an initial and a closing all together, we are wearing our flowers. You are most definitely welcome to wear them these next 24 hours, but especially if you prefer not to, or but you certainly may. <laughs> uh, please uh, join us when we have our final concert tomorrow at three o'clock, you can wear your flowers because we will be singing together since this is called Female Musicians Inspiring Hope in Times of Crisis. So this is the beauty of Galilee. And what we're going to do during this entire day, we 28 hours or so, is take something ex external, outside, and bring it to something which is inside or higher, something which is material, and bring it to something which is spiritual or immaterial. And there's a reason for this. In the Western tradition, and honoring our Italians who are here, as well as we have our neighbors, Father Graziano, our Franciscan neighbor, will have a chance to see the Magdala, um, excavations they have right next door, which are the original excavations of Magdala. 
tomorrow morning for those of you who dare to get up early. We're glad that he could join us. But honoring their tradition, one of the most important pieces of literature in Italy is, well, classic, is Dante's Divine Comedy. And there's a woman there who played a very important role in Dante's uh, pathway toward really the meaning of life, toward heaven and toward God. What I wanted to do is to read how that poem begins. He says this, So bitter is it, death is little more, but of the good to treat, which there I found, speak will I of other things I saw there. Okay, so he's speaking of death. In fact, so bitter it is that death is even better than what's happening. This is a man in crisis. He is in a time of crisis. In fact, he explains that when he arrived in the middle of his life, he found himself lost in a dark forest. For those of you who are familiar with the Divine Comedy being a classic piece of literature in the West, he makes a journey. It's not only, I think, you know, an external journey where he has several people guiding him to understand the meaning of himself, the meaning of life, but to be able to go to the apex and really understand the depth of who he is and the meaning of life, he needs to find a woman. And he's guided by a woman named Beatrice. Beatrice comes after Dante having been guided by men through hell and through purgatory, but to enter into heaven. It is Beatrice, the woman whom he loved. Now, if you've seen any artwork of Dante and Beatrice, she's always painted beautifully. There's something about women, something about womanhood, and we could call it part of her genius, well, I'll explain in a second. Women in and of themselves are attractive, whether they have flowers or not. Genius doesn't mean Einstein. It doesn't mean, although I could because I studied uh, biochemistry, prove the theory of relativity on a napkin, okay? No, 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 that's not what we're talking about. The genius of women, which is a phrase used by Pope John Paul II in the Christian tradition, who wanted to focus on the, the beauty and the goodness that women give to society, he coined that term. It's not here. Is it here? Is it here? Is it in her feet? Where is it in her movement? Well, the genius of women actually resides in every part of her being. But if you want to look at it as one organ that we often look at, it would certainly be the heart. Now, when we're going back to Dante, he sees Beatrice. She is attractive. She is beautiful, like all of you are right now. And so when he is going up into heaven, what happens is he looks toward her. Because he cannot, he is desperately trying to look for God, and he cannot see him. He's looking for the divine, he's looking up. So he looks at the one that he loves, that he could never have. They never got married, but he, he fell in love with her. So he looks to her and he said, at that moment, I could see God. But it was because, as he describes her, Beatrice had her eyes looking upwards. She was looking toward God himself. And he says, when I saw her, I was able to see the Lord. And that tells us a little bit about what the depth of the feminine genius really is and why we are here. Women, if you read many things, not just Dante, we can be terrible. In fact, if we're under stress or if there's something that needs to happen or if a mother needs to protect her children or there's something, we can be like lions. You know, the mama bear, they say in English. Ah, because we will protect. We will fight for whatever is necessary to protect others. But we can also be very base and we can drag people down. We can drag culture down when our eyes are either on worldly things or completely on ourselves. So we have to go back time and again to Beatrice because she has her eyes up and that is our calling. Now, I want to draw your attention to something right out here this beautiful garden in front of us that leads to the Sea of Galilee. You know, you've got this water coming from this piece of archeology, span which was found over here, which was probably used to treat fish here in this place of Magdala called Tarikea, the place of salted fish. 
Well, these gardens, which are shaped like fish coming from the Sea of Galilee, moving up to be, you know, taken from this water, treated and sent out to the whole world, okay? It was designed by a woman. It's called the Living Waters Garden. There's so much that could be said about the water that springs up. But you'll notice that there are towers in the center. And they are beautiful. They have those perfect proportions as you have in art when we're talking about beauty. And so when you look toward the Sea of Galilee, you're not just looking down, your eyes are actually looking up because there's always this movement which goes up. And that talks about what we are called to do as women with our feminine genius. So knowing this, I wanted to repeat the words of Pope John Paul II when he first wrote a letter to women. I am a consecrated woman, I am Christian, but what we hold here is something which is universal, and that's being a woman. And so he said from his heart to the women that went to the Beijing conference organized by the United Nations, which also organizes every year the International Women's Day, with a different focus, okay? But he said, wonderful, we are focusing on women. And he said, thank you women who are mothers. You sheltered human beings within yourselves in a unique experience of joy and travail. This experience makes you become God's own smile to a newborn child. When you put these flowers on your faces, on your heads, there were smiles that came across. When we gave you this rose, which we do to every woman who comes to Magdala, oh, a smile comes across your face. Thank you. You know how to smile and to guide the child's first steps to help it grow. Thank you, women who are wives. You irrevocably, irrevocably join your future to that of your husbands in a relationship of mutual giving at the service of love and life. Thank you, women who are daughters and women who are sisters into the heart of the family. And then of all society, you bring the richness of your sensitivity, your intuitiveness, your generosity and fidelity. Thank you to women who work. You are present and active in every, every area of life social, economic, cultural, artistic, and political. You make an indispensable contribution to the growth of a culture which unites reason with feeling, okay? To a model of life ever open to the sense of mystery, to the establishment of economic and political structures ever more worthy of humanity. Women who are in society, thank you for what you do. You make it more human. You make it more human because we give space, just like mothers, for the individual to come in. Thank you, consecrated women, following the example of the greatest woman, the mother of Jesus Christ, the incarnate word. Look at that. He even named you. These are sisters of the incarnate word. We'll get to know them in just a moment. You open yourselves with obedience, fidelity to the gift of God's love. And thank you, he says, to every woman. Men? You can say that this, week, this day. Thank you to every woman. Thank you for the simple fact of being a woman through the insight which makes you so much, which is so much part of your womanhood, you enrich the world's understanding to help make human relations more honest and authentic. So let's take a step back. One of the things I love about Magdala is you're not only touching the first century, you're actually touching history that went on and on. Okay, here in our part of Magdala, we have just the part which is from the Second Temple period. We go to the Magdala of the Franciscans, they continue to live there. But here we talk about the time when it was destroyed. The Roman Empire, they came in, they were destroying things, but the empire itself was destroyed. What helped save it, part of it, part of the values of the Roman Empire were the monasteries, the understanding of family life, the understanding that respecting all people, okay? So that is what helped bring society up. Now this is key. 12th and 13th centuries, especially in Europe, what helped to save the culture which maybe had, was religious on the outside but not on the inside? Well, one of the things that helped was actually St. Francis himself. A lot of people were saying that they were Christian, but they were living with a, lot, a great deal of wealth, not thinking of other people. Francis comes along and radically says, oh no, no, let's live in extreme poverty and let us serve, and let us bring people to the truth that saved this part of European society. Well, now I tell you, in the 20th century, right now, the 21st century, we face cultural challenges of no lesser magnitude than those faced by the people here in Magdala. 
when those faced when the Roman Empire was falling apart, in the Middle Ages when things were going so badly. Think about your own families and your own lives and your own backgrounds. Some of those difficulties. What is it going to take to save society now? St. John Paul II called upon women to take the lead, okay? To take the lead in finding a way out of what he calls this culture of death because it doesn't focus on the person. Women have this ability to give space, as I said, to the person. Transforming culture so that it supports life, so that each person has a place in thought and action, unique and decisive. This is a new feminism, and that's the beauty of feminism. Now, with that, we are called to bear witness to the meaning of genuine love, the gift of self and acceptance of others. There's so much that could be said, but this is just an introduction. And the most important thing that we will have during these next 25 hours together is the opportunity to experience wonder at what women are doing and women right here. I am delighted to have, uh, as you have in your programs, each of you received digitally and you have in your notebooks, uh, a wonderful array of women who are leaders in so many areas. Mirna Herzog, she has an incredible story in her own life. She'll be telling that to us this evening after dinner, sharing her story. We have Ella Medina and the Alma, the group of women who will be singing in the second concert we have on Saturday, sharing, why on earth do they wear flowers in their hair? Okay, they'll be singing to us about love. They'll be singing to us about um, uh, the Psalms. They'll be singing to us about spiritual things as we walk around the archeology span in the different places here in Magdala so you can get to know it. We have Yiska Arani, many of you may know her. And so let's take advantage of it. We have meal times with her. We'll have conferences with her um, where she can also tell us about her experience of what it means both for Jewish and Christian people, women and all people in the liturgy to say, okay, if I'm gonna, as a woman, help change the world, how do I keep myself looking upward like these columns and beautiful like these columns? So I'm excited about that. We have the Incarnate Word Sisters who will be speaking to us about their work all over the world with people in crisis. Now, one of the things about women with mothers is all of you who are mothers know, and my own mother is here. Hi, mom. Yay. She came specifically for the women's encounter all the way from the United States. And she's a delight and she's very good at making flowers in case you need to fix your <laughs> This is my mom back there. So wave again, mom. Hi. Uh, what, what moms know how to do, as I said, they can sacrifice themselves completely and totally. These women have given their lives completely to go wherever they are sent to serve whoever most needs them. And so we have a couple of sisters who have been working in a really difficult situation in Gaza. And without getting to anything political, they focus on the person. Women, and when we focus on the person, which we do naturally, much more than men do, Naturally, they do that, but women naturally, we focus on the person, we give them space, we bring out their dignity. So we'll have a chance to listen to them and their, their story. Now, I'm delighted to have also Rabbi Lina Zilberman with us because she will be leading us in beautiful music, as you know, through the Kabbalah Shabbat as we begin the evening and welcome the Shabbat. Rocio Ortiz Alancot, she is from Spain. She has come actually to sing for us something that you'll be able to sing much better than I will, and that is the Our Father in Aramaic. And then... Um, we have each and every one of you with us. So I beg you, if you look at the end, at the back side of your brochure, which is what you need to keep with you so you don't get lost with the schedule, I beg you to take to heart these words of Pope Paul VI. For Christians, it's very significant what he says. He was the first Holy Father to come to the Holy Land and he'd said something extremely important about women. And this is what it says. He says, the hour is coming in fact, has come when the vocation of women is being acknowledged in its fullness. The hour in which women acquire in the world an influence, an effect, and a power never hitherto achieved. That is why at this moment, when the human race is undergoing so deep a transformation, women imbued with the spirit of the gospel, of the good news, that is a spiritual spirit of God, can do so much to aid humanity in not falling. In other words, you have the chance, we have the chance to take some time and some space in such a beautiful place to breathe, to listen, to enjoy one another, 
And those are some really important things that have to do with music. I used to play the bassoon and the clarinet, okay? So to play it well, you have to listen to the instruments around you. You have to practice your breathing properly or you can't follow the music. And you have to follow the music and you have to rest at times. And then you have to play quickly at times. Okay, so that's what we'll be doing this entire day and a half together. It's this type of work together so that we can take on our shoulders this great mission that we do have. It's an invitation, but we're built for it. We're made for it. And when we have a chance to go to Duke and Altson, which is the church, well, it's the auditorium church. We'll be having a concert there. As you enter into it, there's a big open space. So just remember these concepts. It's open. It's welcoming, just like us. There are columns there. Each one of those columns has women name, women's names on them. These are the women that are holding up. Okay, if we can say the church, we can even say the world. There's this, a woman in the dome. It's Mary. Okay, for us Christians, it's extremely important. There's so much we could say about that. But this is sort of the image of what this weekend is. So everything that you see around you, and also the example of Mary Magdalene who lived here, who not only was healed here, but became the apostle to the apostles here. What the apostles in Christianity transmitted was what she told them when she didn't find him in the tomb the day of Easter. So.